their jobs and took to the streets to show us what America would be like without millions of immigrant workers. So we'll start in the streets tonight and go on to these stories. I'm Kelly Cobiella in Dodge City, Kansas, where the biggest employers in town shut down in the face of today's boycott. An exclusive interview. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Good evening from coast to coast, from north to south. They wanted us to know what America would be like without them. And so millions of immigrants missed work, skipped school, and marched in the streets. They want America to find a place for those who came here illegally. And it's too soon to know if they changed any minds in Congress. But what we do know is that construction sites shut down, hundreds of restaurants and many small businesses closed across the country. We start tonight with national correspondent Byron Pitts in Chicago. Byron. Well, Bob, organizers here in Chicago had hoped for about 300,000 demonstrators. Early estimates are at least 400,000 showed up. Their goal, make America take notice. What do we want? Justice! When? It was billed as a day without immigrants, legal and illegal immigrants by the thousands, not simply marching and shouting, but flexing their economic muscle. Uh, mess in the restaurants, mess in the hotels, in the streets, in the constructions, and I think they need, they need us. Americans, they don't want the kind of jobs, so we practically were doing that jobs and they don't want it, you know. Unlike last month's wave of demonstrations, politicians didn't simply take notice. Today, many showed up. I've talked to people across the country who say, right. how dare people who broke the law by entering the United States now plead with the Senate and the Congress to do something about that? Well, you know, the problem is, is that uh, we've been engaging in hypocrisy in this country. We don't mind these folks uh, mowing our lawns or looking after our children or serving us at restaurants as long as they don't uh, actually ask for any uh, rights in return. No work, no shopping, no school. This is a wonderful educational opportunity for these kids to see social justice in action. In Los Angeles, an estimated half million demonstrators turned out. But their real impact was elsewhere. This was L.A.'s famed 7th Street Market on Friday. Look at it today. 85 businesses closed. Construction sites in California virtually empty. Skeleton crews in Virginia. Restaurants across the country closed so workers could join in demonstrations. Yet it's the farming industry that likely suffered the most. Estimates are there are more than 11 million illegal immigrants in the U.S. They make up 24% of the farm workers, 17% of the cleaning industry, 14% of construction, 12% of the nation's food service workers. So again, what do you hope to accomplish today? We are here to send a message to this country, to Congress, that we want dignity. That includes every immigrant. Of the estimated 11 million illegal immigrants in the U.S., 7 million have jobs. Jobs that in many places did not get done today. Bob? Uh, Byron, is there any way to know yet exactly what the, or give an estimate of what the economic impact was today? Well, Bob, not really. We've heard estimates as high as a billion dollars, billion with a B. But we talked to many economists today who said there's simply no way to know for sure with so many illegal immigrants working off the books. All right. Well, well, thank you very much, Byron. That is a good point. Nowhere in America was all this being watched more closely or felt more deeply than Dodge City, Kansas, which is why Kelly Kobayea is reporting from there tonight. Dodge City, Kansas is the heart of the Old West, home to cowboy legends, the cattle trade, and today to 15,000 Hispanic immigrants, half the area's population. Uh, the Hispanic people only come to, for work, for work, you know. They're not criminal, only looking for yap. Clemente Torres has lived here more than 20 years. He's a legal resident now and works in one of two huge Dodge City meatpacking plants. The two American companies that own the plants closed them today as a sign of support for their overwhelmingly Hispanic workforce. Viva 
and Torres, along with thousands of his co-workers, marched down Main Street, where the usually busy Hispanic-owned shops were closed. It was a sight that worried some of Dodge City's Anglos. Amy Wetzel's family has been here for five generations. It's going to hurt us, mm -hmm. especially with the community that we're minority now, you know, whites are, mm -hmm. or, you know, so, yeah, it's going to hurt. But today didn't entirely play out along predictable lines in Dodge City. The boycott was far from universal. Mike Weiss kept his furniture out. store open. How many of your employees are Latino? Over half. Sales and delivery both. How many showed up for work today? All of them. And after a slow start to the day, Weiss's usual customers showed up. For him, the growing Latino community has meant a 40% jump in sales. For a long time, we've always heard that, you know, these people were transient. They'd come to Dodge, they would uh, get a job, and they'd send the money back to Mexico. And we're seeing just the opposite. Today's boycott didn't close down Dodge City, but it was another reminder that the Old West has a new face and a future that is guaranteed to include immigrant workers, no matter how Washington lawmakers decide their legal fate. Kelly Cobiella, CBS News, Dodge City, Kansas. These demonstrations were just more bad news for an administration that does not seem to get much good news anymore. As